Hello ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. I really do appreciate your viewership. Thank you so much. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a fairly affordable fragrance. And this one is by the company Zoha Aroma and it's called Melange Darabi. So make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin the video, I do want to disclose that this product was sent to me for review by the company, but as always, all opinions will remain my own. And they gave me the opportunity to look over their entire website and pretty much select the fragrance that I wanted to wear. And so I looked at the note breakdown for this one in particular, and I saw notes of honey and vanilla and melon, cyclamen. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go with this one. It sounds pretty interesting, and I'm very happy to now have the opportunity to review it for you ladies and gentlemen. So this fragrance is fairly affordable as you can tell from the thumbnail of the video. You can find yourself paying anywhere between $20 and $45 if you want to go for a 15 mil or if you want to go for a 50 mil like the one that is pictured in this review. So this is a fragrance. It's an original creation by the way. It opens up kind of fruity floral. There are sweet hints throughout the entire composition and I want to let you know how much of an emphasis the honey and the vanilla have in this fragrance. Is this going to be a bit heavier to be worn when the weather gets a bit cold outside or is this a solid scent for the spring and summer. I'm really excited to let you know what I think. Let's go ahead and start things off by taking a very quick and close look at the presentation. So when you purchase this fragrance, it comes in this pouch that is sort of a faux leather finish and on the front it just has Zoha Aroma with the website below that. And here I have the 50 milliliter bottle. So you can see it just has the name of the company and the name of the fragrance on the front. It's called Melange Darabi and this is an original creation. On the side, you may also find the concentration as well as the ingredients printed directly on the label. The cap for this fragrance does not click into place, but it's a very snug fit, so you can pick this one up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer is incredibly wide. Let's continue with the smell. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, in my honest opinion, it smells fruity and floral. So the fruity floral aspect of this fragrance, some might say could potentially lean a little bit feminine. It almost has this peach and jasmine sort of gardenia feel. However, I don't think that the peach note is in here alone. I think had it been in here by itself and it were a bit stronger on the floral nuances, especially with the cyclamen and the jasmine, then it could have certainly been a women's perfume, I would say to my male subscribers, please don't touch it unless you're a fan of those types of fragrances. However, I do think there's a certain personality in here that melds itself pretty well with those fruity and floral ingredients. There's honey, there's melon, there's vanilla, and so you're not smelling entirely peach in this one. The melon quality adds a nice sort of exotic and quite different take on this fragrance. And I have to say that it's probably one of the first things that I smelled when I said it smelled fruity and floral. Of course, I pick up on a little bit of that peach, but I also get a lot of that melon note in here. Now, melon is a very popular note in fragrances like 50 Cent for Men. I know there's also one by Sean John. I think it's called I Am King. I could be getting that one wrong, but it's certainly a note that I've encountered before. Also, Rockaware has a fragrance that contains a melon note. This one, it's amplified a lot more more it's quite strong and it has a very pleasant smell without necessarily being uh, an aquatic or a freshy or a citrus dominant scent that's to say it doesn't smell like fragrances like Dior Sauvage or Bleu de Chanel or anything like that in the case of this fragrance I think the thing that will really stand out to people is it has an aroma that you don't often encounter in fragrances even if you're smelling a lot of the fruity floral fragrances that are on the shelves that are marketed towards women none of them quite smell the way that this one does in terms of the honey note that's in here it's not too sweet it's not too sappy it's not too viscous or sticky or anything like that. So it's not going to be reminiscent of fragrances like New Harlem by Bond Number no. 9, but there's enough of a honey-like sweetness in here that really makes this fragrance stand out among other honey-based perfumes. And of course, Back to Black by Killian immediately comes to mind, but that one is very powdery. Uh, this one is only powdery by a touch. And even then, I don't think that that powdery nuance is coming from the honey. There's a little bit of sweetness that you get in the base. It doesn't make itself immediately apparent, so you do have to wait a little bit for it to come out but there is a little bit of vanilla in the dry down that I seem to enjoy whenever I wear this one. Now I know earlier on in the review I said is this one going to be good for the fall and winter on account of those sweet and heavy notes and it does open up quite loud or is this one going to be a spring and summer fragrance? 
my honest opinion is that this one would gravitate towards more uh, spring and summer on account of the fact that it has that dominating and pervasive melon and fruiting nuance and it also has those florals in here now if you want the complete note breakdown it has orange jasmine peach cyclamen melon vanilla and honey so i didn't t talk much about the uh, orange note in here and that's because when you spray it on it doesn't really smell citrusy to my nose it's more a combination of the fruity nuances and the floral touches ultimately i think this is a floral type fragrance that can be worn by men fairly comfortably especially when you're comparing it to fragrances like lyric man by amouage which is rose dominant dior Homme by christian dior which is iris dominant and any number of other fragrances sevilla lobe which is orange blossom dominant so there are a lot of uh floral fragrances that could be worn by a guy and i think this is another one to add to that list Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness in the overall smell, I do find this to be a fairly unique fragrance, especially because of its lasting power and the way that it smells upon the initial spray. It's quite explosive. You can tell it's a very loud fragrance. It's strongly concentrated. Despite the fact that it's an eau de parfum, I would venture to say it's above 25% oil. In terms of the overall smell, I think it's incredibly pleasant, but if you have even the slightest aversion to floral notes, I would probably steer clear of this one but if you're a fan of not necessarily gender bender fragrances but fragrances that are not classically or traditionally masculine in terms of utilizing like fur and moss and vetiver and whatever else then i think that this is one that you ought to check out especially given the fact that it's so affordable in terms of the longevity on this one i think the longevity on this one is quite solid i got seven hours on my skin projection was really good for the first two hours and in terms of versatility like i said i would probably wear this one in the spring and summer in in terms of occasions i can definitely see this one being dressed up just because it has that aroma that kind of intrigues and so i think people will ask you what you're wearing i think people will be impressed by the fact that you're not wearing a generic type of a scent and that it has a very different smell and it packs a punch it has a bit of an umph to it so i really do enjoy that and i can see this one being worn comfortably by a man and a woman Perhaps somebody a little bit older would be more comfortable wearing this one. And what I mean to say is if you're a teenager or an early college student, I would probably wait until you're in your 30s or so to rock this one, just because that floral nuance does make it a bit more mature, but not dated in any way. In terms of the presentation, I do find it to be quite minimal, but I think that that also allows the cost to be kept low. So my final verdict on this one is... I personally enjoyed this one. I think it's a really nice floral fragrance. I do think that a lot of times the floral medley in here can sort of get jumbled up a bit. And so if I want an iris dominant scent, of course, I'm going to go with Dior Um or Mask Milano's Latessa. If I want a heliotrope dominant scent, I'm going to go with Dulce Aqua by Profumum Roma. If I want a sort of um, blurred out floral fragrance with a sweet touch and a fruity touch that smells exotic, I'm going to go with this one. So I quite enjoy this one. And I want to thank once again, the folks over at Zoha Aroma for providing me with this bottle for review. I really do appreciate that. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Melange Darabi by Zoha Aroma. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could support this channel. It's easy and it's free. All that is required of you is to click that red subscribe button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, and of course, top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot more, those types of videos will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.